In the second video, we will explore the environment and lighting possibilities in Maxwell Render. In the Maxwell Render Globals panel inside the Environment Rollup, there is a section for sky settings. The main options are Sky Dome, Physical Sky, and None. Sky Dome allows you to set a lighting dome surrounding the scene. You can set the color and intensity of the dome light. Make a quick test render. It is a simple and easy lighting setup. Adjust the color and intensity of the dome light to get different results. Now let's explore the physical sky capabilities. Select Physical in the Sky Type drop-down. The physical sky can be displayed interactively in the Maya viewport by clicking the Activate Viewport Preview button. Make a test render using the physical sky. You can control all the atmospheric conditions like ozone, water thickness, turbidity and scattering if you need to match a precise atmospheric situation using measured physical data. Setting the atmospheric conditions is a more advanced way to use the physical sky. Once you have set an environment you like, you can save it and use it in another project using the Save and Load buttons. If you are not familiar with meteorological and atmospheric concepts, check the Maxwell Manual for an explanation of the various concepts and how you can use them in your scenes. You can also set the geographic location, hour and date and Maxwell Render will automatically recreate the lighting conditions for that specific place and time. As you can see, the Maxwell Render Physical Sky is very accurate and easy to use. Let's take a look at image-based lighting. 
IBL is a common technique that uses high dynamic range images to light 3D scenes and to create reflections, refractions and backgrounds. Set the sky type to none in the sky options section and tick the image based environment checkbox in the image based roll up. Select the high dynamic range image to be used as a background. You can use HDR or MXI files. HDR and MXI formats can store all the lighting information from the place they were taken and you can then use that to light your scene. For reflections, for reflections you can use the same image you imported for the background or you can import a different one. The Active Viewport Preview button will display the HDR image in the Maya viewport when IBL is used. You can select which IBL channel to see a preview in Maya. Displaying the image in the viewport allows you to position your objects and cameras in sync with the background. Hit Render to let the image illuminate your scene. Image based lighting is a nice way to mix 3D elements with real photographs. Let's talk about emitters. Disable the image based lighting and make sure the sky type is still set to none. If you would render the scene now, it would come out completely black. The scene contains three simple planes that we are going to use as emitters. In real life, all light sources have their own surface and volume. In Maxwell Render, light sources are defined as light emitting materials applied to actual geometry. This is the most realistic approach to light sources. Apply a Maxwell material to one of the planes, add an emitter component in the material properties and remove the BSDF component to create a pure emitting object. The light intensity can be set in watts. Add another Maxwell material with an emitter component. You can set the color of the light using the color picker. Repeat this for the third plane to set up another light source. We will quickly adjust the camera exposure settings by using some standard indoor values. Camera exposure settings will be covered later in this video. Apply the values and hit render. The three emitters are now lighting the scene. Another way to set up the light color is by choosing the color from the Kelvin scale. The correlated color option allows you to choose a color from the Kelvin temperature color scale in Kelvin degrees, just like with real lights. You can enable the sky dome, physical sky or image based environment to produce additional lighting that will work together with the emitters. Or use lights with different colors to produce dramatic effects.
Let's look at the multi-light feature in Maxwell Vendor. Enable it by ticking the multi-light checkbox in the general settings roll-up. When multi-light is enabled, Maxwell Vendor stores the contribution of each light separately, allowing you to adjust them with sliders while rendering or after the rendering has stopped. It is an extremely useful feature, enabling you to choose a lighting setup while watching the results in real time. You won't have to relaunch the render for every little adjustment. You can mute the light by clicking the M button or hit the S button to display a light in solo mode. Now let's look into the Maxwell Vendor cameras. Maxwell cameras behave just like real cameras and they have the same parameters as a normal SLR camera. The shutter speed controls how long the film is exposed to light. Lower values keep the shutter open longer, producing brighter images. In animations with motion blur, longer exposures produce a more patent blur, just like when taking photographs of moving objects. The f-stop sets the aperture of the diaphragm, controlling the amount of light that reaches the film. It also influences the depth of field effect. Low values, like 2.8 used here, produces shallow focus, while higher values allow a larger portion of the scene to be in focus. Set a high f-stop value, like 18, and all the objects in your scene will appear in focus. So remember that motion blur in animated objects is controlled by the shutter speed parameter, while the depth of field is controlled by the f-stop parameter. The film ISO value represents the sensitivity of the film to light. Remember that you can adjust the ISO value to set the right exposure while rendering or after the render has finished. All the lighting information is stored in the MXI file, Maxwell image file. The priority exposure modes allow you to specify the exposure using a standardized value, the EV number. You can then freely adjust either the f-stop or the shutter speed, not both, without changing the brightness of the image, just like in a real SLR camera. For example, 
If aperture priority is enabled, the shutter speed will automatically be adjusted when you set the f-stop aperture value to maintain the same image exposure. What about animation? Configure the image naming scheme and the time range as you normally do inside Maya. Animate an object to produce an animated sequence. Set the sampling level and time to control how much time each frame will be rendered. For animations, the sampling level is more useful because it ensures that all the frames reach the same level of quality. Set a long time value to make sure that the set sampling level is reached first. Use the batch rendering menu to have Maxwell render the specified frames. You can also render from the command line using Maya's Render Utility Program. The frames are exported to separate MXS files and rendered one by one in Maxwell Render. Alternatively, you can export all the frames as MXS files and use Maxwell Render's sequence rendering mode or the included network rendering system.